Hi, this is Bill Meeks from Legends of Gotham. I know you might have downloaded an episode of Before the Bat or Gotham TV podcast. You're in the right place. We decided to do a roundtable with all three of us, all three of the big Gotham podcasters, to kind of give you an intro as to what our shows are all about, and just to kind of get together and have have a nice little conversation, too. It was a really good time. We did do it live on Google+, Plus via video. So if you want to check that out, you can just go to the uh, show notes for this episode, episode 6 of Legends of Gotham, at legendsofgotham.com. And now, on to the roundtable. This is very perilous stuff you're messing with. It's a room full of Gotham podcasters. Uh, welcome to Legends of Gotham, where we talk about Fox's new series, Gotham, set in the world of Batman. And this is our first live episode, so things are a little crazy. Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, I'm Bill Meeks. And I'm Anne-Marie DeSimone, and this is my friend Robin, and this yeah. is Batman. And Batman. And uh, we still haven't figured out what we're calling this on uh, the Gotham podcast yet, but uh, on the Once Upon a Time podcast, we do. We generally call it Magic Juice, which we bring to more informal yes. episodes. <laughs> And uh, we brought a, we brought a few selections that were Gotham related here. First off, we have what I'm drinking, which is the Killer Penguin Ale right here, which is fun. And I'm rocking some Ace Joker Hard Cider, even though he's not in the show yet. And we also have some flying fish here for later. So. And just for proper representation, a little bottle of Bacardi for a small bat. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we're we're gonna get started talking to. Uh, we we have a couple uh, other Gotham podcasts on here with us today. But first, we got a. Uh, it, it was weird. Like right before we were about to start, we yep. got this weird voicemail message from. I think it was Vicky, maybe or Vicky? something. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess we'll stay quiet and we'll figure out who it is. Hey guys, this is Victoria Cartagena. I play the name Montoya on Gotham. And I just really want to thank you so much for all your enthusiasm about this show as the premiere gets closer. Uh, we're having a blast, and we're actually completing episode seven, which has a lot of exciting sequences that, um, well, let's just say, uh, my stunt double was needed. <laughs> so buckle up. Um, anyway, look out for that one, and I hope you enjoy the show. See ya. And yes, that that was a very special message. Victoria, cool. who uh, you guys might not know, uh, <laughs> plays Montoya, Renee Montoya on Gotham. And uh, actually, we'll go ahead and uh, start introducing our Gotham podcasters here. Thank you, Victoria. By the way, yes, thank uh, you. we coordinated that over Twitter this week, and uh, thank you so much. We very much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, our first podcast that I'll be introducing uh, is Derek and John, and they actually interviewed Victoria as well as uh, Andrew, who plays Chris. Crispeth. Uh, Crispeth. <laughs> right, how, are, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Hi, doing good. How are you doing? This is a Gotham TV podcast in Dublin, in Ireland. Uh, mm-hmm. Great to be on. Great to be on the show. Thank you very much for inviting us. We're rocking uh, caffeine and um, what looks like pints of vodka, but it's not. It's just water. <laughs> pints of vodka. That, 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 that's, that's extremely hardcore. That's, that's, that's putting the Irish yeah. in the podcast. Really. But, yeah, it's pretty late for you guys, isn't it? It's what, like one in the morning, something like that. Yeah, it's one a.m. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So yeah. we're up, we're up, we're energetic. You know, we're we're looking forward to the show, and we're looking forward to uh, to talking with you guys about it. Yeah, excellent. I, I'm oh. sorry that we're going to disappoint you, and uh, you're going to be like, why did we even stay up for why? these guys? <laughs> no, but hey, actually, if you if you guys want to plug your latest episode, that would be great. Because yeah, it was a really good interview. Me and Anne Marie mm-hmm. both listened to Loved it. it. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. We did. Uh, we got a, an interview with uh, Victoria Cartagena and uh, Andrew Stewart Jones, uh, who play mm-hmm. Christmas Allen and um, Rene Montoya on Gotham. Uh, really delighted to get to get a bit of time with both of them, and asked, uh, we were able yeah. to answer some of our questions uh, uh, last last week. So yeah, really, really good, and delighted to, to hear it, and delighted to hear the feedback from uh, from people who've been listening to the show. They seem to really enjoy it. Um, and where the, the, the two of them have been really, really good to deal. It with. was. Uh, it was really good as well, just to find out that. Basically, they would kick some ass. Basically, if uh, if they were in an interview situation uh, and we were being interrogated, don't mess with them. I think mm-hmm. that's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, and we also have uh, unfortunately uh, his co-host Kelly. Uh, he has two co-hosts on this show, uh, but uh, Kelly wasn't able to join us tonight. Uh, but Phil from Before the Bat, how are you doing, Phil? 
Uh, good. It's great to be here. I'm I'm not a foreign or anything. I hope I'm interesting <laughs> enough. Yeah, I, I, you said you said you were up uh, from the the northeast, right, of of these United States. Uh yeah, I'm in Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh. Excellent. You, you know what? I, I I one I really like the Nightwing picture you have behind you there. Oh yeah, I got that at uh, one of the conventions a couple nice. years back. Nice. And uh, and two, I, it feels like you're on a little bit of a lag, which is going to make our next segment very interesting. We <laughs> 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 I, I, Like I, I, I'm actually gonna break character. I, I'm not no longer Bill Meeks, the host of uh, what's our podcast called, Legends, Legends of, Gotham. of Gotham. I'm Bill Meeks, the guy trying to coordinate the <laughs> the round table. Do you think with his delay, do you think we should take turns or should we do buzz ins? For the trivia. We can take turns. That's fine. Take turns? We can okay. Take turns. Excellent. Well, we're going to do trivia. Surprise. Hi. Surprise. <laughs> trivia. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of episodes or anything to uh, base the trivia around, so I, I think what you did is you went and you watched that, that nice long... Uh, the four uh, parts. The Legend Reborn yes. uh, special that they put out. And, you know, a lot of that material has been recycled into various promotional, promotional spots right. and things like that. So we should all have a pretty good sense of it, right? I'm not going to – I'll be keeping track of points. Yes, please, because I'm bad at that. And I, I guess what we'll do is we'll have Derek and John work on a team and uh, Phil work on his own. Yes. And uh, it, then if all Kelly right. happens to pop in here, She'll uh, be on the team. She, she can join Phil's team here. All right. But uh, you want to go ahead, Anne-Marie. Okay. Derek and John, yes. when was the last time that Gordon was in Gotham? Ooh, as a child. As a child, yeah. But is there an age that you're looking for? Oh, they said a number. Ooh. Yeah, I'll give you a hint. It, it, it was a time period, like like a length of time. It was 10 years, I think. Yes. yes. Derek and John. Over 10 <laughs> years before. Ding, 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 ding. We don't have a soundboard or anything, so, so I'm there just going to be the soundboard. We are the soundboard. All right, Phil. <laughs> okay, Phil. Yes. What does Fish call Gordon when he introduces himself? Uh, uh, um, just a shot in the dark here. Uh, detective? Uh, er, no. Eric and John for the steel? Uh, I think it's a tall glass of water. Cool glass of milk. Cool glass of milk. Oh, very good. Is that your final answer? It is. <laughs> yeah, so it's a cool glass <laughs> ding, of ding, milk. Ding, 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 ding. Right now we are two <laughs> to zero. Two brains. Okay. All right, Derek and John. Who witnesses the Wayne murders? Oh, that's a big spoiler. Uh, yeah. Selena. It was in the promo. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like spoiler. in every promo. It's in every promo. <laughs> Selena Kyle. Selena Kyle. Ding, 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 ding. Cat girl, as I like to call her. Actually, I'll, I'll do a different sound effect for this one. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Which is funny coming after the cool glass of milk. I like to say. Um, okay, <laughs> Phil. What division are Monsia yes. and Alan in? Um, the MCU. Yes, yes, major crime. Ding, 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 ding. Phil's on the board. On the board. Okay, Derek and John. Why does Oswald say he is snitching on his boss? Because the murder of that young boy's parents was just too much for him to handle or something like that i'm yeah. gonna give you that well i also i'll say <laughs> we'll give phil the chance to steal here if okay. he can get a better if he can uh, do a better exact line. <laughs> <laughs> can you repeat the question okay why does oswald say he is snitching on his boss oh uh <laughs> i don't think i could do better than they did all right oh well actually i think oh, kelly's oh, in here kelly can you like hear us have... Kelly, can you hear us? Okay, Kelly can't hear us yet. We'll go ahead and continue on. Okay. Okay, so, so that was ding 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 ding, ding 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 ding. The correct quote was, "That poor orphan boy pricked my conscience." Uh, yes, yes. I yes. like quotes. Sorry. I like. It. I like. <laughs> it. Okay. Um, oh no. He, uh, he has a good line reading of that too. He d- he's a really read, good line. I remember reading. the line reading. Ah, la 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 la. Okay, this one is more on the technical side, and we are on. Who am I on here? Bo? Uh, yes, Phil. Phil. Yes. Okay, how many weeks did it take for them to build the precinct set? Oh, um, uh, six. Love. Derek and John for the steal. Little conference for ten there. Ten weeks. Ten weeks. 
Ten weeks it is. Ten's ten, a big number. Ten's the number. <laughs> ten is a big number. I didn't realize how many times ten is involved. It does. <laughs> ten is the magic number. Oh yes, it is. It's a, a good okay. set as well. It's that Kelly. Okay, is I think we Kelly? have Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Can you hear us? It is Kelly. Yay! Excellent. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I finally made it. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Kelly. Hey, good. Sorry. I was <laughs> like the, uh, uh, well, my family threw it. Impromptu birthday party for me, and surprise, I had no idea. Oh so, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to do. Sorry. What's to do? Happy and, uh, yeah, what? Come on. Yes, oh, yeah, come on. What's more important? What's more important? Go off for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little early. My birthday is. My birthday is actually the 24th, but my sister's birthday is the 16th. My niece's birthday is the 17th. My parents' wedding anniversary is the 19th, and mine is the 24th. Lots it's of happy everything, and um, I literally, <laughs> yeah, I had time to drive the local coffee house. They have Wi-Fi, and um, <laughs> throw up my Mac, and here I am. So, nice. In fact, I just got a cup. So. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, and we're glad to support the coffee farmers of every country, really. Yes, absolutely. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, throw the next question to Kelly, since she hasn't got to. Ke- Ke- oh, I feel bad with this one. Kelly, uh, we're right in the middle of a trivia, Gotham trivia. Uh, so I, I think we're going to throw the next question to you. And I'll say, since you just got in here, oh, you boy. haven't had a chance yet, uh, this will be worth double. Yeah. I feel really Too bad on this question. Do you? Oh, oh, okay. it, do the next one then, and then okay. come back to this okay, one. Okay, I, know I, I may have yeah. an unfair okay. advantage. I How's may that? have an unfair advantage because I've seen the pilot. Oh. Oh. You've seen the pilot? Oh, I would have wow. World in Chicago. Ooh. Yes, There's... the entire pilot. We will have to talk about that <laughs> yes. in, a bit, in a minute. Okay, well then you probably will get this <laughs> one right. We totally can. <laughs> okay, here's your question. What does Catgirl steal? There was one, we were, most of these were oh. coming from that four part Unborn. Uh, unborn? Uh, the Legend Reborn. Legend Reborn? The Legend Unborn. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Wayne will go back into the womb. We're going back. <laughs> but she steals one thing in the promo. Oh, so maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness. Well, she steals more than one thing in the pilot, so I try to think that's a promo. Um, Spoilers. <laughs> besides my heart, because she's awesome. Uh, right. Naturally. <laughs> um, what is it she steals? Dog on it. Um, I remember it was some. I'm not gonna spoil. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's the hard. I, I remember it's taken from her eventually, but um. <laughs> I would imagine, yeah. Okay. Oh, we need an goodness. answer. Five. The fourth one out. Um, four. Three. I can't think of it. Two. Derek and John to steal. I think I have no idea. I have is absolutely it, no idea on this. Is it the? Mm, is it the wallet? Phil for the one. steal. <laughs> oh, that. Yes. Phil. Uh, 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 I was counting on Kelly to be my senior weapon. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think this one would be that hard. I'm really excited now. <laughs> it was milk. She ah, stole a half oh, gallon uh, of milk and had it shoved in her jacket. That was, well, our, think, the, the, was our first, or one of our first posts we ever put up on our website. Was that That's picture right. of her stealing was milk? Was it really? <laughs> and she gives it to the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, she gives it to the cat. Totally. I remember That's that now. Awesome. Okay. okay. Well, I think I think technically at this point it's mathematically impossible for before the bat to win. But I have really fun. The last three are well, two out of the three are really fun. Okay. Look. <laughs> okay, Derek and John. I don't know how much research you did, but what is Bill and Anne Marie's favorite techie <laughs> quote from that four-part prom- or promo? Wow. What's the favorite? Did you That's listen to our podcast? Yeah, okay. Uh, we did listen to your podcast, but I have <laughs> Well, I know you love the scream, Anne Marie, but it's not a snacky. <laughs> 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 Any idea? Have you listened to our show? If not, you won't know. I hope. No, I barely have time to hear. Listen to my own show. I have. <laughs> Wait, you listen to your own shows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Okay. okay. Well, I. Uh, Would you like I to give me the answer? But I spent a whole day teaching tech today. Oh. oh. 
<laughs> okay, well, I will say it was, I, I believe the gentleman's name was Mike Myers. He was one of the set designers. And he was talking about making the water, and he was like, and then you bring in the water, and you have to make it murky, but, but not, not too murky. murky. <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I guess, you know what? Those okay. questions, gone. Okay. I'm This is completely illogical, completely out, out of anything that we normally do. Last question. Whoever gets this question wins the contest, okay? Oh, good grief. Who in this hangout appeared in the Gotham fan trailer? Show me Anna Marie. Uh, <laughs> Derek and John win. I would have. Everybody's a winner. Uh, <laughs> I say everybody's a winner. Everybody is a winner. I do like Gotham trivia. Love it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, now I have another challenge here uh, before we get into, you know, more of a loosey-goosey we conversation. Like challenges. <laughs> I thought, you know, one of the big uh, jobs of uh, uh, like a fan caster or a podcaster for a specific show is to cover, you know, the news, the news stories surrounding the show every week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I thought it would be a good idea if all of us uh, tried covering a uh, Gotham news story in our own particular style. So uh, going up first is uh, Gotham TV. Gotham, you want to go ahead and cover your story here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the story we wanted to cover this week was uh, was one that came out from The Advocate, which was about the diversity that's that's within the city of Gotham and um, within the TV show of Gotham. It's a, a really interesting story with some contribution from the lovely Victoria Cartagena uh, and from Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, really, the focus of the story is about uh, is about the fact that this this show is actually going to have a really living, breathing city. There's going to be um, there's a lot of uh, women in high-profile roles. There's uh, there's an LGBT character in there with Rena Montoya, um, and there's, the, the diversity that's within the cast and the diversity within the city is really evident from it. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's kind of really important that Bruno Heller really kind of said he wanted it to be a city based in reality. That you would have Captain Essen, Sabrina Guevara as like this head of the homicide unit. You've got Fish Mooney, head of a criminal underworld. All these ladies in positions of power, influence, like Barbara Keane. And then you have like this, as we found out from our interview, I suppose, with Victoria Cartagena, uh, a Rene Montoya who is badass and mixes it with the men and will kick them, <laughs> hit them, <laughs> shout at them, or do whatever, you know, she, and um, yes. I think it's just really important that it has that, um, that element to it. it, it's it's really good to see, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it really adds to the longevity of the show as well, having this really diverse cast of people around, I think it's really going to be, uh, going to be one of the things that will stand out most about Gotham, so yeah. it's, it's something that we're, uh, we're really interested in, I thought it was fun, a fascinating article as well, so uh, if you haven't read it, just go to advocate.com, it's, it's under Holy Diversity Batman, which I, I love as a title as well, so uh, yeah, they're really, really good. I don't think Burt Ward, though, actually said that in his 109 um, <laughs> Holies from season Holies one. Holies from season one of yeah. Excellent, okay Yay! Round of applause for Derek and John. That was very good. I I listened to that show. I, I like it. Definitely. I like it. Good times. Good times. Okay, let's Thank see you. here. Uh, next up in our news challenge, <laughs> before the back, go, go ahead and take it away, uh, Phil and Kelly. Okay. Um, the uh, article I have is from uh, Deadline, and I think we mentioned this briefly on our last podcast, uh, Kelly, about how Netflix has already bought the rights to Gotham before the first episode even you know aired. Um, I think it said the deal was like worth. I mean, it's like How it works out. That? Yeah, it's like it works out for them like a, I don't know, like a million three an episode or something. It's you know, it's a big, pretty big deal for something that hasn't even aired yet. And that's going to be a main for viewers because not only you know you'll be able to catch up on Netflix too, which so many people do that nowadays. I know there's plenty of times where. I'm playing catch up on shows and it'll be nice for people that maybe don't catch the first episode or two. They'll be able to catch right up on Netflix, which will be great. Yeah. I think they said they're throwing up the whole season like um, next September. Right so like right two. before season two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're not putting them up right as they, like right after but they still, air. I mean, they're doing catch up. I'm curious. So. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. good. He's looking at me like, this is their new subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 
Yeah, I don't think they're putting them up one at a time. I think uh, I think that might be Netflix's new uh, business model is they're putting up you know whole seasons at a time. Okay. Okay. Well, they never. There was a time where they would put them up after they aired, right? Yeah, like back when uh, Netflix and yeah. first started, first we used started? to watch Heroes that way. Yeah. We did watch yeah. Heroes that they, way. They, they put them up like a day after it aired or something. Yes. Okay. So exactly. Do, uh, they used to do uh, Breaking Bad over here. They they put that on mm. the same night it was airing yeah. in the U.S., which is uh, really yeah. unheard of. I think a lot of the channels. Oh, I, I remember. Here. I remember that. I may or may not have used the VPN to watch the finale. <laughs> I, I won't admit to anything. Uh, but I, round of applause for Before the Bad. Okay. Snaps for you. And here, let's see, to wrap up our news section, Emery, did you see this? I, uh, I didn't. It's loading. Oh, you did? <laughs> okay. I, I thought it was really cool, especially, you know, considering that uh, we're still this far out from the show starting and everything. The Television Critics Association has actually voted Gotham as the most promising new show this year. I buy it. Like, which is pretty uh, amazing. I, I mean, I've actually heard that the, the main shows that are getting a lot of attention this year are all, like, DC Comics-based. Like, the three top shows as far as social media engagement, uh, critical acclaim, or uh, Constantine, Gotham, and The Flash. Interesting. Yeah, so it, it's just we, you Especially know. Especially coming from the non-comic book girl. It's very <laughs> interesting. But no, so. no, I thought this was like a, a very good. Uh, can, can I, I believe it though. I mean, just from these promos, they're really exciting. They're mm-hmm. they pull that feel of the police procedurals, but it also has enough of the comic booky stuff to you know get those fans. It's a, appealing mm-hmm. to many, many groups. Yeah. While at the same time, it doesn't seem geared towards the lowest common denominator. It it's, seems it's an intelligent. Yeah. It seems almost like a show you would see on on like an AMC or like the mm-hmm. Teen Titans mm-hmm. coming up like on TNT or, or like a cable network. Okay. Okay. You know, not necessarily geared towards the people who are watching. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, very, very cool, and I uh, hopefully uh, bodes very well that we won't have to start another new podcast next year because Gotham right. was cancelled. Right. <laughs> well, and it does even mention that a potential new breakout star is Robin Lloyd mm. Taylor, which we've mm. been saying since the very first promotion. Yeah, that he that, was like kind of the guy guy to watch. Oh, uh, right? yeah. He's exciting just to yeah. watch an interview with, let alone act. Oh, yeah. So. And scene. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> Snap like it. Like the one, the one thing I really enjoyed about that, uh, about that article was, um, was the, uh, the, the comment about social media in the UK being particularly, uh, particularly active, active around Gotham. Um, yeah, I think that's just us. <laughs> I was going to say that's just you guys. Getting- <laughs> You guys are, like, so active on social media, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, I have a hard time keeping up with you. You're the best retweeters I have ever seen. And I have my Twitter my... up, like, during my entire work day, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> when you come out, your work day is, is while we're at home in the evening, so we just sit here that's and true. tweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, uh-oh. Nice. Yeah. Competition. Dun, 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 oh, social that's okay. Media. We get social media while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, you know, we keep the 24-hour presence, then. Exactly. I was going to say, what we need to do is we need to get a uh, personal That's assistant right. in exactly. Australia. Work yeah. together. <laughs> get somebody in Australia to take care of that time. I love yeah, it. To cover the dark hours. Okay, so I guess uh, yeah. probably the way we should uh, begin here is uh, we should probably, you know, each give a little spiel. What kind of differentiates our podcast for the other? Why are we better than the other people here? Is basically what I want everyone to go into. And be as cool as you want. Don't be cruel. We're all friends for now. I'm kidding on the cool well, part. That's right. For now. Uh, give us a few weeks. No, but uh, let's go I'm ahead kidding. and start with uh, Phil and Kelly from Before the Bow. What's your deal? <laughs> <laughs> how do you, you got the podcast? That sounds like a loaded Almost question. That, um, <laughs> that very much so. <laughs> well, uh, last last uh, last uh, episode was uh, the first one where all three of us were together. But um, mm-hmm. I think the 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 easiest way to describe us is uh, you know Kelly has the best background in TV, and Tyler and I come more like from a comic book background. Mm-hmm. Because we're gonna, because we're gonna I cover really, not just the I, show but the comics. Sorry, I don't think you uh, mentioned. Uh, heard, you, go ahead and give a shout out to Tyler too, because he he wasn't able to be here tonight because we wanted it to be even with the host and everything. We weren't giving you the advantage of a third host. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Tyler hey, Patrick. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tyler. <laughs> it's That'll fun because day. you know it's it's not, it's not your usual. You know, you got two comic book guys, and I've reviewed TV for the last seven years, so I enjoy a superhero show. I, oh. I podcast a couple other superhero shows too, so um, I come at it from a whole different angle. I'm not so much the comic books I, I've read for a long time, mm-hmm. and I'm getting back into that now. But I go for more of the cinematic, the uh, writing, the music, those type of elements. I'm also a musician, so that'll do it. Fair enough. Uh, what other uh, shows do you podcast for? You mentioned a couple. Of, uh, Arrow and uh, um, Agents of Shield, maybe. Arrow and the Flash. The Arrow Flash. and the Flash. Right. So I'm, I'm nice. Arrowcast and Flashcast. Yeah, we're, yes, we're I also. Going to, uh, we're going to watch The Flash. I don't think we're going to do any sort of podcast. I can't do three it, podcasts. Nope. Yeah, because we already have the Once Upon a Time. I do three right one. now. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah the funny fun. part is, yeah, the funny thing is I podcast for Flash and Arrow also, but different podcast than Kelly. <laughs> yes. Are, are you guys planning any crossover episodes or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, we did. We were to, well, uh, I think, I think I'd be on to turn around round tables for those, perhaps. Mm. Nice. Roundtables are good. Yeah. good they time. they open, like up, open up community and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, Anne-Marie, why don't you uh, give people a little bit of an idea of what they'll uh, be in for if they tune into Legends of Gotham. Also, I would like to mention there are six people watching live over on the Google Plus page, bit.ly slash Gotham Podcast. If you want to throw some questions for us at the end, we'll get to them. We'll take it. Um, okay, for Legends of Gotham, well, basically that guy over there is a big old comic book geek. And, um, you know, he's so far as to have, like, the Superman tattoo on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on I, this arm. It's inconvenient for me to get to or I'd get to it. Yeah. I, however, just like TV and especially love a good police procedural, SVU, mm-hmm. CSI. I can mar- I'm can i currently remarathoning SVU, whatever's oh. on Netflix, which they need to update because it still has Stabler. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so that's where I come from into this. But as soon as he, he was like, hey – there's going to be a Gotham show. I was like, hey, we should do a podcast because that actually just sounds fun. Yeah, and w- weren't you wa- – you were watching a procedural with Bullock like right around the time. He that, was on SVU. Yeah, he was on SVU. He was, on, he was, he was right? on SVU, and he was yeah, like a SVU. main character. <laughs> and then he's like, no, he's going to be Bullock in Gotham. I'm like, how is he going to be the – no. And then they kicked him off the show the next episode. I was yeah, like, Yeah, didn't oh. they say he was transferring they to another department? They transferred him to another department. So I was like, you <laughs> – Bad word, bad word, bad word. <laughs> but basically, um, Legends of Gotham is going to sort of educate the audience as well as me mm-hmm. on anything Batman that comes up. Because I'm just going to watch and go, oh, look at the pretty. I like that mm-hmm. story. And you're going to be like, oh, there's 17 backstories. Here, read these books. And I'm going to go, no, just yeah, tell me about them. You'll be like, oh, I really like this new character. I wonder what his deal is going to be. And I'm like, that's the Riddler. <laughs> hey, I know the Riddler. <laughs> you do know the Riddler. I know the Riddler. <laughs> oh, if but I that's look- about it. I don't think we've mentioned this on the podcast, so I'll just mention it real quick before we uh, throw to uh, Gotham TV, is that uh, the Riddler, the actor who plays the Riddler, I completely blanked on his name just now, but he answered a traditional Riddler riddle for me on yes. Twitter. Like, he, yes. he uh, okay. tweeted out a picture of himself standing in front of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, I'm it. and I, I responded to him, uh, when is a bridge like a troubled child? And he he responded in kind when it's suspended. So uh, <laughs> Corey know, Michael Smith. Corey, Corey Michael Smith. Smith. Sorry, I, I apologize Corey. for forgetting that Corey. I can't remember my a own name. A lot of these people have three names, which I can't say anything because I have three well, names. That's but... actually a SAG. <laughs> that's actually a... a SAG thing because they come into SAG and they'll already be a Corey Smith. Right. So they have to throw in the middle name there because you can't yes. have two people with the same name. Or Which whatever. is understandable. I'm just saying. Okay. Now, what I want to know is can you have two people with the same name on Gotham TV podcast? Probably not, but two people with different names probably want to explain how they approach Gotham. Wow. Go ahead, guys. That's, that's that a good, good transition. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, uh, we're based in, uh, in Dublin and Ireland. Uh, yeah. we, we've been covering the show since, uh, since March, so we have quite a few episodes out there. We've got uh, just our mm-hmm. 15, 14th episode there. 15th. Yeah. 
15th. We just recorded our 15th yesterday. Yeah, it's funny. Right. Um, so <laughs> what we've been doing essentially is from the from the beginning. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? I'm, I'm behind on these things. And um, what we what we essentially been, oh, I can't count. It. Well, one of the, <laughs> um, what we've essentially been doing is covering uh, covering a lot of the comic series that have led to the creation of Gotham, things like Gotham Central, which is a, a very uh, probably a very big uh, character heavy um, comic book series uh, featuring Rana Montoya and Christmas Allen. All centered around the police department and so on. And that kind of came from uh, that came from tweets really early on from Ben McKenzie and so on, where he had this like library set out on his table and we kind of zoomed in and spotted a few comic books and we kind of thought, well, let's have a look at these, see how that's going to inform him, his character, his role and so on. Maybe give us an idea about the show. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of looked at it from that leading up to um, obviously the air date. Um, And that's why at the moment we call ourselves zero year, um, Obviously, reference to the comic books uh, there, and then yeah. year one, as and when um, we, get we, we get the show, we mm. will. Uh, as long as we, if we get to year one hundred, then I think <laughs> that year will be year one million. Yeah, <laughs> that will be. We will look a lot older, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> you guys covered uh, uh, Gotham Central too, which you know, very, very much a inspiration point for this show. We wanted to do more of kind of covering like relevant episodes of the animated series mm-hmm. and maybe a couple of the comic things, and we just didn't have it time. Just didn't happen. It, it completely fell off our radar. 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 We started covering um, covering Gotham Central in probably May, I think it was, and our final fifth part of the of the series yeah. uh, just last month so we, we were going for a long time and we diverted off into doing the Christopher Nolan films which are mm-hmm. uh, three two hour podcasts I think yeah really um, wow. <laughs> dense films and yeah. stuff yeah uh, we, we were kind of we had to go and watch Batman and Robin just to get some light relief, but it was, um, <laughs> it ended up being, oh no, his idea. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it sort of was the sinking feeling watching Batman and Robin on the, on, on the TV, but... Uh, well, let me ask you: Was there any? Were there any? Like maybe one or two little nuggets you may might have pulled out of Gotham Central you think are going to be super relevant as we get into the main series? Absolutely, I think the 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 big thing about Gotham Central, if if you don't know what it's about, essentially the purpose of it is what would what would do the Gotham PD do during the daytime? What do they do uh, at the times when Batman isn't involved in in the city? So it's quite a um, I was going to say quite a central. It's quite a uh, quite a good inspiration point and jumping off point for anybody that's that may be interested in in reading some of the comic books. The biggest piece in it is probably uh, the arc of Rene Montoya, uh, as we mentioned earlier on. The, the character is a is a, a lesbian in the show. Yeah. Um. That's that's up front in in all of the trailers now. Um. That we've seen. It's it's up front. That's that's her past in the comic book series. That was a huge. Arc arc for her um oh, but yeah. it also deals with it also deals with her past and some of the other characters that she's dealt with in the in the past and them coming back and yeah and obviously her relationship with her partner christmas allen and mm-hmm. i think um you know, everyone's coming at the show differently uh, i think one one of the things from us is you know really want to see how the origins of the villains but also to see those lives of the different police partnerships and how they all intermingle will be like really cool to, to see it. Absolutely. And I know we plugged it already, but the interview with Victoria and, and, uh, and Andrew, uh, to be honest with you, that was that was a huge get for us purely because of how interested we were in those characters from Gotham Central. Right. Uh, they were the first people we wanted to interview and we were delighted to be able to get that experience. Yeah. It was really, really good. So, yeah, plug it, it again. <laughs> they're they're a very 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 nice too. Like we we've been going back and forth with them on Twitter and stuff. Just the nicest people you could ever want to meet. I love how meet. active they are. They're mm. probably two of the most active cast members. Yes, yeah. it, it, you can mm. you can definitely tell they're they're two of the most excited too. Like they're just like so pumped to be in it. I know? got this gig. Like that's what it feels <laughs> like. It's, somebody wanted me. Yes. Okay. Now our next question here. I I did have you guys uh, listed to go first, but you reference my picks, so I figure we'll. <laughs> circle back around to you. Okay. Uh, the question yeah. here is uh, ba- basically what heroes or villains uh, we want to see from the comics maybe come into the show. And I, one, I, I have sort of like a pet theory, pet want here. And if uh, 
Ack Awesome TV writers are listening, please put this in. I'll give you a million dollars. When we have it, which <laughs> don't hold your breath. But uh, I, I want the condiment king. I, I want some down on his oh, luck. That's right. You talked about guy this. in a midlife crisis with condiment guns trying to rob a bank. That, that's all I want out. Of, if, if that's all I get out of this show, I will. I will leave the show happy. <laughs> so you know, Gotham TV writers. That's awesome. <laughs> Gotham TV writers. Make, we'll stop podcasting about this show. So do it. No, I'm kidding. No. I, so that that's like my my one little wish. And then obviously I. And I guess we'll go ahead and expand this to the big two uh, that I would really love to see would be the question and uh, the specter. Because uh, the question and the specter, not the originals, but the legacy characters are Rene Montoya and Crispus Allen. So I would really love to see them throughout the course of this series build to that. Build to uh, turning uh, Rene Montoya into uh, objects of, objective dis... Ah, I can't speak. Objective dis... Objective... <laughs> Is <laughs> Ayn Rand. Uh, <laughs> no, but I uh, superhero like the question, and then uh, see Crispin Al- Crispus Allen turn into God Spirit of Vengeance. That would be really cool. Do you have any blank face? Blank I know face? nothing. Well, that's the question. I am pretty sure that the only character or the only villain that I know that we don't already know is on the show is the Joker, and we know he's going to be on the show eventually. Eventually. Mm. They've said it. They've mm. already started dropping hints. Mm. So, um, the Joker and Harley? Oh, my God. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, and uh, I'll go ahead and throw to Gotham TV. What characters would you guys like to see? We, we love the idea of the question. You know, yeah. as we said, any any more uh, screen time that that Vicky Cartagena gets, uh, the the better, really. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, really delighted about that yeah. one. We certainly like two two big magazines um, over here. Uh, I don't know whether you guys get them um, in the US, but Sci Fi Now and SFX. And um, they kind of, I think we might. Yeah, they 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 ran yeah um, stuff about exploring other vigilantes, obviously because there's no Batman, um, mm-hmm. and obviously with the question that would be a really sort of nice way, I reckon, mm-hmm. of bringing in other types of um, vigilantes that help protect. Um, so we're really we're totally with you on um, the question, definitely. Um, and then what we. The big bad from Gotham Central, really. Um, I know he's been sort of Jim Corrigan. Um, he he has a huge part to play in Gotham Central, and that element of evil or villainy within the actual police department, like real proper. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, I uh, you want to give like the uh, the elevator pitch for the character because I, I I know the original character who was yeah. the original Spectre, mm. but. Yeah, this is um, – so Jim Corrigan is basically – he's within the forensics division, and he, he kind of takes bits of evidence and sells them on eBay, that type of stuff. And you kind of think that that's all he does, and then it gradually gets deeper and deeper where he's taking drugs off the street and, and all this type of that stuff. He's got uh, beat officers um, – in his pocket and it has fairly tragic consequences by the end of Gotham central, but Mm -hmm. it's just that idea of um, this really evil, corrupt police officer within, you know, um, the police department when they're trying to fight crime and this dissent that they're saying of, um, of corruption and chaos in Gotham itself would be a really nice sort of kind of twist. And it's, it's been hinted he he's in Constantine or a, another Jim Corrigan, um, so I mean a, a kind of a bit like you it, even with the Spectre that idea of having that crossover um, mm-hmm. with another show could be quite cool and that sort of supernaturally mm-hmm. type thing could be really good. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're going to be shying away from the supernatural elements. What with mm-hmm. uh, the poison ivy stuff that they've yeah. kind of kind of previewed and everything. Which is very cool. And yeah, yeah uh, the way you des- describe uh, Jim Corrigan almost puts me in mind of uh, like Vic Mackey from The Shield. Just, just like that super corrupt cop, except we might not see a rege- redemption arc for him. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, maybe not. Now, Kelly uh, put in here in chat, and it, it we'll go ahead and throw into Before the Bat on this too, but uh, she, she mentioned that there was a bit of that element in the pilot. Uh, without getting too spoilery, uh, could, could you uh, expand a little on that for us, Kelly? 
Yeah, you definitely had the feeling in the pilot that you had questions of, okay, who's really good and who's really bad here? I mean, you, I obviously, I fell in love with Jim Gordon within the first 10 minutes of the show. And that was instant. <laughs> But he mm. is forced to make some very interesting decisions in this pilot that make you question his partner and other people in the department as mm -hmm. to what their motives are, um, how much they're collaborating with organized crime. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really pretty gritty. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Like, uh, have, having the entire pilot, uh, who, who was your favorite character overall in the pilot? Oh, um, I, <laughs> I really liked Gordon, and I found myself really wanting to get to know Selena Kyle very much. She was very, very fun, and you have mm -hmm. a lot of questions about her. And, and also, uh, Mr. Cobblepot. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, he, he does walk out like a penguin on occasion. <laughs> he is, um, well, the poor guy gets, uh, he, he gets the, the shaft kind of, and, you know, you kind of feel bad for him, but you kind of see where his beginnings are, so. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. Hey, I I, I'm sure he'll get his revenge somewhere along the way. Somewhere. I, I, and I, I guess we'll go ahead oh, and open oh, up yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Phil, Phil uh, what characters from the comics would you like to see come over? Well, uh, first of all, I don't know if he could, they could do it because he's going to appear on Arrow this season, but uh, I thought uh, Ra's al Ghul would be an interesting choice since he's Very basically much. immortal. And he's more of a Batman character than he is a Flash character or Arrow character. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, you could see him checking out young, you know, young Bruce Wayne and be like, hmm, could be someone I have to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And um, another one, yeah, and the other name I was going to throw out, I don't know if many people here know this, but – um. Basil Carlo, and I think they he was the first Clayface, and I think they used Matt Hagen in the animated series, the second Clayface, but the, the idea was the same. It was like, yeah, yeah like, a, yeah, yeah, like, you know, that being kind of interesting, a homicidal actor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even, even with no powers, just like a ho yeah. homicidal actor. Yeah, that's the great thing, too, is, uh, you know, and that's one of the reasons I always love Batman, the animated series, so much, is they always have really good villains and very, like, noirish kind of tragic villains, and that's something I really hope to see from this show, too. It, it, you, you know, uh, one more character I'll mention, and then we'll move on to the next topic that I would really love to see at some point would be the Outsider, which is an evil version of Alfred. Basically, Alfred get I forget what it is. He gets hit with a ray or something like that, and it becomes almost like a, he has like a, like weird like killer croc kind of skin, and he becomes like this evil guy, and it's like this mystery for several issues. Like, who's this outsider guy who's terrorizing Batman, knows he's Bruce Wayne, everything else? And so I think it would be really cool to see Alfred become the outsider while taking care of little Bruce Wayne, you know. <laughs> that, that, that could definitely make for a very cool uh, little Bruce episode. But uh, you know, just, Sean Perdue can play dark. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know who? Sure. Yeah. You know what else we were saying on our the last episode of our podcast might be interesting if you saw the Haley Circus and maybe like um mm. a younger version of uh, Dick Grayson's parents. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Like like maybe Bruce likes likes to go there every once in a while just to relax. I'm just oh, gonna bring Robin. Yeah. Back. There's Robin. Hi Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Hi Robin. By the way, Robin. I, I don't think we've called this out, and for our audio listeners, we are in black and white tonight, so it's kind of like the old movie serials over here with our Batman and Robin I'm dolls. Batman. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, and this is just an open question. I'm going to throw it out there open, and I'm not even going to answer it. Oh, so I you don't didn't care. want my answers in there. That's... No, you can answer. You can answer. Awesome. I will not answer. I'll let them answer. What characters are you most excited for? Open question. Go. Straight away. How many? <laughs> straight, straight, straight away. Mont one. <laughs> Montoya and Allen. It's, they are one. They are, the, they are the ones that I'm mm -hmm. definitely most excited for. Without a doubt. See, I thought you were saying they are one, like they are one unit. They are they a partnership. Are yes. <laughs> kind of what are. I think uh, Cobblepot. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what Robin Lord Taylor brings yeah. to Oswald Cobblepot. And also Harvey Bullock. I just think he's all layers of different gray potentially and oh, yeah. uh, if i was answering this question that would be my answer would be <laughs> but i'm not 
But you're, you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> never give John. Oswald. Ne- never give John a question that he has to provide one answer to. <laughs> I'll always provide two or three. Sorry. Excellent. That's good. Um, uh, Emery. I'm excited for Oswald to see where he goes. Yeah. Like I've said, like from the very, very beginning, he's been yeah. so, so crazy and twisted, and he like. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Have, have you seen any of the uh, the photos of uh, what's her name, Carol Kane, yes. as his mom? Mm-hmm. Oh, she looks crazy. Yeah, it looks good. Yes. She's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hair. Woo, put down the teeth. <laughs> Straight out of Tim Burton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Fitting. 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 So I'm looking. Be, uh, before oh, the yes. back, go ahead. Sorry, I'm Kelly. Looking forward to seeing. That's okay. I'm looking forward to see what they do with Selena Kyle and her storyline. There's kind of an interesting event in the pilot that um, really has me curious to see where they're going to go with it. I, uh, I can feel you I'm biting really your tongue from here. You. We appreciate that. <laughs> I, I totally am. I mean, I, <laughs> you um, want to start quoting. I'm also that's curious what you want to Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I tried to be really good on our podcast and not that spoil. So uh, <laughs> I don't well. like that. I want to tease you. I want to get you interested yeah. to come watch, but not spoil. Right. <laughs> um, Alfred, I think it's going to be interesting, too. He There's a different kind of feeling with this new Alfred than I got from every other Batman I've seen. So I'm mm-hmm. really kind of interested to see where they're going to go with the relationship with Bruce and Alfred, and if Bruce is going to have interactions with any of these other people who later become villains, vigilantes, whatever, as he's young. I'm curious about that. Excellent. Okay, Phil, I think you're the only one who has an answer besides me, because I'm not. Bullock. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In case you didn't know, but uh, 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 yeah, I think that it sound it might sound like the easy answer, but I think I'm looking forward to Jim Gordon just to see mm. like the qualities of the character. You know, is he going to stay you know 100 percent you know by the book cop, or are we going to see kind of like Batman tendencies? You know, is he going to have to cross a lot lines at certain points and almost mm. become close to a vigilante? Right. Or like, is, is that, you know, gonna have like kind of kind of a corruption arc and then come back from it or something like that? Maybe not corruption, <laughs> but just like, but just like bend the rules to you know get the job done. So like you know, years later when Batman does appear, you know, Gordon, that's why Gordon understands him somewhat because he's like you know I've I've been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you know, I, I, th- I think the biggest thing we're all looking for from Gordon, as far as character growth, is the mustache, right? <laughs> like this has to be the origin story of the mustache, for sure. What? So what? Clean shave in season one, five o'clock shadow season two. <laughs> season three, they go completely off off the grid and do like a goatee or something. Yeah. And then no, they like the back. shape, yeah. like. Crazy. Oh, the whiskers. And, and the, and the like hair just keeps <laughs> the hair just keeps getting grayer and grayer. Yeah. Or he loses it because he's pulling it out. <laughs> or maybe somehow poison ivy's like toxin is it responsible for his mustache growth or something like that. <laughs> How okay. close is she getting? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, another open question, another one I won't be answering mm-hmm. ever. Gun to your head. Uh-huh. What has you really worried about this show as a fan of like the character or the world? Like is there anything that has you like ah, I'm a little nervous that they're going to get this aspect wrong or they're not going to hit this right anything? Open question. All right. Yeah. Um my Yeah. My, From the pilot. My, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, go, ahead. go ahead, Kelly. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, no. from the pilot, I'm a little concerned about Fish Mooney. Um, no! She was almost, I felt like she was almost a little too cartoony. I mean, it could be the whole eccentricity, but it, it was dialed up a whole bunch of notches. Um, <laughs> it almost felt a little too cartoonish. I, I was looking for a little bit more grit, like the Arrowverse or, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. So that made me a little concerned. That, but that's, that was just the pilot, so... That's one thing that's always struck me from like all all the promotional material and everything is like I I think I'm gonna enjoy her performance but it is a little uh, kind of scenery chewy a little bit of sort of like mustache twirly. But you love mustache twirly. I do. Villain. I do. When it's done well. They're like your favorites. <laughs> You're like mm, yes. mustache twirl. Mm. Uh, this is the mustache episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, no, that's but just I, the one what, place where I'm kind of on the edge. 
Mm-hmm. You're just like not sure how it's going to go. Well, we know she's going to die. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. Right there. Oh, okay. that's and she goes well, down twirling over else the stuff. Like, Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> She wears it down too much. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyone else have any any major concerns or well minor major concerns? Now, now I'm nervous for Fish Moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I suppose for me, one of my biggest concerns really is actually going to be the reception for the show. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm I I know we're all excited about it. I know we're sitting around really excited about it. But we've all seen the comments out there. Um, I'm sure about about people not wanting to see a show about about Gotham without Batman. Uh, I'm, I think they've done a great job uh, so far on the promotion of the show and, and showing what's what's going to be involved in the show. But there are still going to be at least, I'd say, at least 40, 50 percent of the people that are going to tune in are people that uh, are people Wonderful. that want to see a Batman show. Um, mm-hmm. They're not going to see it. So <laughs> those, those people yeah. are going to be pretty annoyed that they've been yeah. told to turn on to the show. And, and it, it's difficult for difficult to keep positive about a show when you see a lot of negative feedback about it. Um, right. But you know. we were talking about this because it was kind of like at least that's up front about it's you know the Batman prequel at least that I mean that is up front mm-hmm. like yeah. for me my main kind of nervousness is to do with blending in a sense this idea that there's a lot of villains there um, and there's a lot of villains that have have been hinted at like Mr Freeze as well and all that for later on and Hugo Strange. And it's how they blend them across the, the 16 episodes. Like, right. rather than having, you know, all these just coming at you that they maybe just take their time with some of them, say, like, Corey Michael Smith and the Riddler. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is how they blend that kind of police procedural with a, the serialized element of, say, the Penguin's origins and the development of Jim Gordon, I think. Um, because I think we, with Arrow in season one, it got very episodic, um, and then they they seemed to sort of change it up. And in season two, it became much more serialized across across season two. So they're just my two little concerns that I'm nervous about, just how they blend it. But they're the professionals, so I'm sure they'll get it pretty right. But, uh, yeah. Turn the lights off, for yeah, Kelly. Kelly. I think I think they're kicking Kelly out of the coffee. <laughs> oh, right I, I got a couple more minutes, but they, they had to turn off the lights behind me because they control the drive through. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have a couple more minutes. We, we'll try and push through as as quickly as possible here. Okay, uh, I I think I think the only person we haven't heard from on this is Phil. Uh, Phil, are there uh, any concerns you have? Yeah, um, the, the concern <laughs> I've had from day one is that I don't is, is the show going to get just more depressing, depressing, depressing as time goes on because crime is just getting worse. Because if the cops handle the criminals too easily, then you're going to be like, mm-hmm. well, then what's the point? Why do they need a Batman later on if they, you know everything's mm-hmm. hunky dory and the police are <clears throat> keeping charge, you know, taking charge? And mm-hmm. oh yeah, I can definitely see that and. Uh, I also say too, like kind kind of the way I'm feeling like the episodes are gonna go is gonna be kind of like a freak of the week while playing out more of the Penguin and Gordon's arc over the course of the entire series. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I see it going mm-hmm. right now. And I, I, I guess we should go ahead and get into predictions here too. I think my big prediction for season one is that the season finale of season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oswald the Penguin is going to kill Fish Mooney and assume her power position in the Gotham underworld. You think it, it's going to wait that long? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, th- I, I think what they'll do is they'll I kind do. of play out the character over the season. Mm-hmm. And then in the last episode, he'll betray her. Maybe even referencing back that moment we've all seen in the promotion materials. In I, the back uh, of the car. Yeah, or no, the uh, I I would open a vein um, or whatever. May I I would assume maybe like from a writerly perspective, maybe kind of like doing some sort of synchronicity with that scene because that seems like a pretty important scene in all the promotional stuff. Yeah. Right? Do you have any pred- predictions, Amory? I don't remember. Hold on, did I have one? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> okay, Amory is a blank slate. I'm she telling just... you, I'm. <laughs> I'm a lot better when there's episodes, so I have something to yeah, talk you, about. You have you have material to build off of. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Gotham TV podcast. Wait, what are your predictions for season one? 
I think I think for me, I think the biggest prediction I have is that we have no idea what we're going to see for a lot of these a lot of these episodes. Every single bit of promotion that we've seen, every still, every every trailer that we've seen so far has all been from episode one, um, which mm-hmm. only Kelly here has seen. Um, we've got another fifteen <laughs> episodes um, to cover, and I'm I'm really excited to see what they do in those fifteen episodes and how they expand those casts. You know, looking at TV shows like uh, Agents of Shield or like Arrow is a really good example. The change, if you look at a, an episode from season two of that or even towards the end of season one of, the, of, of Arrow yes. uh, versus the first three, four episodes of that show, it's almost unrecognizable. Um, See, people from, keep telling me I need to get back into Arrow because I watched the first three or four episodes and I hated it. Like, I yeah. absolutely hated it. We, we turned off season 10. Yes. We, we turned off at episode 10 of season one, but we uh, have watched all the way through to the end of the second season. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's worth getting back into. It is the Batman TV show, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, season two was a lot different than the first season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very I, much so. Absolutely. Definitely have to check that out. Um, okay, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, Derek and John, did you have anything else to add as far as predictions, or should we move on to Before the Bat? No, I think that's uh, I think that's it. Really, John has no prediction. Okay, no, I need up way late for us. Okay, <laughs> before the bat. <laughs> it's two a.m. Uh, the two a.m. circles are starting to appear. <laughs> I got it. I can do this. I got it, man. <laughs> okay, uh, before the bat, any predictions for season one? Well, I'm going to take the easy way and throw everyone else's predictions in. I think there are going to be a lot of surprises, but um, the way you were saying you thought Fish Mooney was going to get killed in the season finale, I think mm-hmm. maybe she won't get killed. Maybe her and Cobblepot will have like a big gang war. Uh, oh, that could be fun. Interesting. Interesting. So, like, yeah. Awesome too? Yeah, may- maybe um, Cobblepot takes like, more of the freaks. Like, um, I know they said they're planning on putting Mr. Freeze in the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know there's been some some noise about Harvey Dent too, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily Two Face, yeah. but Harvey Dent. Hmm. That would make sense. That would be cool though to kind of have like I I don't know like the last ten minutes of the season finale be the start of the game war. Every all the villains or all the gangsters flow out onto the streets to cause havoc, and then the summer break. <laughs> yeah, sh- yeah. Oh man, let's sh- all go sh- to the. Hand that would be awesome. Thoughts are fired. You don't, I, you don't know who's kinda, dead until next season. <laughs> See, that's fun. I kind of think it's gonna take. I think it's gonna take a while for Cobblepot to uh, to work his way up to taking over anything. He's he's really pretty weak to start out with. Mm-hmm. Um, holding her umbrella. Like it doesn't yeah, seem like he has any machinations starts. going on, or he he seems like he's he's the lackey at the bottom of the totem pole, and that's what gets him mad and gets him wanting to power um uh, my prediction i'm gonna i'm gonna be really crazy i'm gonna predict that there's gonna be a season two right now i i, I can tell <laughs> you like those that. Types of predictions. nice there, yeah yeah so there yeah. was there was a an auditorium completely packed for the pilot at chicago mm-hmm. i can tell you that there was maybe a sixth of that room for a Leonard nimoy skype so we're talking <laughs> that many more people <laughs> they mm-hmm. were going crazy and applauding. The power went out during the oh. pilot. Wow. There was a terrible storm. The power went out, and there was only like four minutes left. Oh. <laughs> and everybody thought, oh, no. It's like the worst took possible time. It 15 pot. minutes to get the power back on. Yeah, it took them 15 minutes to get the power back on, mm-hmm. and um, then we didn't have any audio. It took them a few more minutes to get that. So we finally got wow. to see the ending of it, but because of that, we didn't get any time with the stars, which really kind of stunk because they were there and, you know, no time to talk to them to do the Q&A. But, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I think there's going to be a season two. I think that you're going to be really surprised by Jim Gordon's ingenuity at, you know, here he is in a place that's so corrupt and he's got a, he's trying to fight the corruption, mm-hmm. but he's got to do it in a way that he can stay where he's at, where they don't get rid of him. So he's yeah. got to find creative ways to um, to fight this the dirty cops. Uh oh. By uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the, yeah yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah well Batman he's got to do it alone for a while because he's pretty lo- he's pretty uh, young yet. But um, mm-hmm. you know find interesting ways without jeopardizing his position. Oh yeah for so sure. So I think that's sure. going to keep it really interesting. And uh, Batman, he, he showed up here. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how he got here. Uh, I'm sure no one saw me reaching for him while you were talking to <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Oh, oh, there's another one. There's another one. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, got my Batman on. Nice. Bill has a Batman as well. I won't go to him. Come on, Google. Okay. But Batman's showing up, which means it's time to end our show. I know that I want to go ahead and I. Definitely, I want to thank everyone for thank showing up tonight. Thank you guys so much. I really this appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Complete thank you. and total blast. And I, I figured we'll, we'll end uh, letting everyone know where they can find our individual podcast. As for us, uh, we podcast at legendsofgotham.com. You can search iTunes or whatever, Legends of Gotham. Our sure. Twitter's at Legends of Gotham. Uh, and my Twitter is at Bill Meeks. And my Twitter is at AMD Simone. And, uh, yeah, if you want to contact us about thoughts about the first episode when it comes out, legendsofgotham.com has all of our contact info up there and everything Detroit. like that. Okay, uh, Gotham T- TV podcast. Where can I think it's about you? time for Bill to go. Yeah, I think uh, the killer penguin. I <laughs> <laughs> killed you. <laughs> well, um, yeah, we're, we're gothamtvpodcast.com. Uh, you can get all of our all of our shows on there. We're also on iTunes, Player Player FM, um, pretty much anywhere. Uh, you can get yep. us on mm-hmm. get us get us on Twitter and Facebook and uh, Google Plus. are always always willing to chat. It's really easy to find us. It's Gotham TV podcast pretty much yeah. everywhere. So uh, they are yeah. always on the social media. We are always, around. Yeah. even when they're sleeping. I think they sleep answer things. <laughs> Who sleeps anymore? That's <laughs> true. Who sleeps in the morning? <laughs> Okay, and uh, before the bat, where can people find you? Um, our email is before the bat at gmail dot com. Uh, Facebook is before the bat, the Gotham podcast, and on Twitter we're at before the bat pod. Excellent, excellent. And yeah, I and am uh, at, I'm oh, at go ahead, Super Kelly. Squint. Super twit. I'm at super squint. S- <laughs> super squint. Super squint. Super squint. <laughs> super squint. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry for talking over you about a million times there, Kelly. Yeah. Oh, I think she's gone anyway. And she's gone. She <laughs> got that into the same time. She's like, I'm super squint by. Which is great. Okay, now, Emery, we still haven't figured out how we're closing these We have yet. no idea how we're so closing these. I, I guess until next time, they come back for more Gotham. Legends of Gotham Woo! Podcasters Roundtable. Yay! No bad. <laughs> Everyone clap. Clap now.